So like mentioned, today I'm going to share my thoughts on bidding wars. It is no joke when I say Calgary is in a hot seller's market like most markets around the globe right now. We are seeing the majority of homes go pending within the first 48 to 72 hours. So this brings me to my very first point of getting prepared. This is a very fast moving market. Those who are fully aware of current market conditions, understand recent sold prices in a given area, and have all their documentation ready are the ones who find success. Get your pre-approval written up, get your knowledge base down, and get ready to act fast. You cannot last minute step into this seller's market and expect to win your first offer. So let me just say that I hold strong to my integrity. I will be the first one to tell you when I think a home is overpriced and maybe you shouldn't buy that specific home. You might hear that a lot from other real estate agents, but I have built my business and found great success in developing trust and long-term relationships. I'm not one to advise on a conditionless offer as I do not believe in skipping out on the inspection conducted by a professional. Now, some people are happy and willing to do so, which is totally cool, but for the everyday homeowner who wants to buy a home, I will typically chat more about it and get a better understanding of your knowledge base. I'm pretty lucky I used to be a plumber, a general laborer, dabbled in most trades, so I'd like to think that I have a good understanding of home rentals, their costs, and some mistakes that can be easily missed. With that being said, unless you're paying full cash, I would never recommend skipping out on that financial condition either. Financial situations can change very fast without much warning. If you get a pre-approval, try not to make any large purchases without consulting your lender first. You wouldn't want to offset your debt to income ratio. So let's get into a few of the strategies I utilize when making offers. First, let's think about your home buying process and chat about your team. If you want to be successful, who you work with matters. And it starts with your realtor. Does your realtor even know these strategies? You know, can they comfortably navigate through difficult negotiations and provide you with realistic updates and not just save face? when a negative turnout happens. Your mortgage broker or your bank advisor. Have you had a solid sit down with your lender to find out the do's and don'ts? Can they close quickly and get the job done efficiently? Your property inspector. Do you know who you'll be utilizing right away? What's their track record? What is their process? Can they get the job done fast without any hiccups? And finally, your lawyer. Your lawyer is probably one of the single most important aspects of this transaction. If anything goes completely sideways at the worst of times, your lawyer is going to be your first call. Interview them and get to know who they are before you decide who you're going to use. Now the first one and maybe the most obvious one is to write a personal letter. Letters are not permitted in every state to my understanding, so make sure to consult with your realtor before doing so, but being able to put an emotional and personal touch onto a piece of paper is huge. Sometimes a seller doesn't always want the highest price for their home. Sometimes they just want their longtime home to go to a newlywed couple, a new growing family, or just someone who will take care of their garden they've spent years nurturing. Being able to highlight some of the key features of the home, providing a simple family photo, and sharing that with the homeowner to showcase that you will be the one who cares for their loving home may go a lot farther than you think. Now, it doesn't always work but it's a great start to being unique. Second, get your lender to call the listing agent. Having your lender hype up your financial situation without sharing private information is amazing. Being able to stand out to that listing agent is important when they are presenting many offers at once. That small gesture called communication is typically well received by most. Lenders are that second verification for that specific homeowner. They can confirm which days they foresee this agreement closing and talk about just how strong of a contender you really are. If the conversation flows well enough, maybe they can open up the door to ask the agent about potential concerns that the seller might have. And on that note, figure out what the seller wants. This can be very impactful. Doing this type of research before placing an offer can pay out huge. About 90% of the time I hear price is the most important aspect of the offer, but every so often condition period, possession date, accepting a non-compliant RPR, or even allowing the seller to take certain things like heaters, appliances, or structures can be very strong negotiation points for my buyers. Not every seller wants the most money. Sometimes figuring out how to best convenience that seller in the process can pay off. So let's follow up with that by raising your deposit. Now raising your deposit is pretty important for sellers as it provides them with that amount of money if you decide to pull out of the deal after you waive conditions, as well as it shows your strong financial position. Now, I hope and pray that you do your due diligence prior to waiving any conditions and are very clear of where you stand before you purchase any home. But things happen once in a while 
and people need to back out of transactions for unforeseen reasons. Sellers want to see that deposit cover any potential damages that could arise if KSAT happens. Maybe they already bought a house and waived their conditions on the buy side, or they have arrangements to start a new job in a new city. That deposit, while showcasing your strong stance, also plays an important role to the seller on the other hand. I do want to say that the deposit is always retrievable before you waive any conditions. If you find a home, you like it, you place the deposit, conduct a property inspection, and you find many things wrong with that home, you can submit a non-waiver and get your deposit back in full from that listing brokerage at no loss of the deposit. How about shortening your contingencies or condition periods? This is where being prepared and having a solid team that communicates efficiently is very important. Work with your lender. Find out just how fast they can get the documentation processed on their end. Have your inspector lined up with the dates already worked out. Do what you can to make that condition period as short as possible. Work with your team prior to looking at homes and have these things ironed out beforehand. Sellers in a seller's market typically understand that their home can sell pretty quickly. They don't want their home tied up pending if they have two, three, sometimes even five offers ready to go. Again, sometimes it's not realistic to provide a conditionless offer, but if you keep your condition period as short as possible, your offer may stand out when compared to other offers. Now, a cool one I've seen in the past is offering to pay for the seller's closing fees. The sellers have some upfront costs associated with selling their homes. If you want your offer to stand out, add in a term that you're not only willing to pay X price, but you're willing to add in that additional $2,000 to $2,500 to pay for their lawyers or their RPR or their cleaning. Yeah, of course you can just put that $2,500 into the asking price, but how are you standing out? Why not calculate that into your final asking price, but word it differently to showcase to the sellers that you are unique and you are ready to take additional action to purchase their beautiful home. So a very popular but confusing for a lot of agents is adding in that escalation clause. This clause gives you, the buyer, the final say into whether or not you're able to buy a home maxed at a certain price. If there are multiple offers that are presented on the home, some of which that are higher than yours, you now have the ability to potentially offer a higher price above your initial offer. So that can be a little confusing, but hear me out. If you place an initial offer of $550,000 with the escalating clause and a maximum price of $580,000, you now have the potential to offer a higher price if the second offer is lower than $580,000. Now, an example of this would be if the second offer is $570,000, which is above your initial but below that threshold. With the clause, you have the opportunity to place an additional offer between that $570,000 and $580,000. So, this can be a somewhat frustrating situation for a listing agent because by law, they have to provide me the documented offer of a true and honest offer placed by the prospective buyers. Now, it can't be verbal, it can't be text, it has to be a physical photo of the legally binding contract with the names of the buyers blanked out. That means there are additional steps for that listing agent. This is seller's market is pretty new for a lot of agents who have become realtors in the past five years, and not a lot of agents fully understand this clause. So who you work with matters. Now, as a competent buyer's agent and a successful listing agent, I find myself explaining this clause to quite a bit of people, just trying to give them a better understanding of how it works in more detail. So that last tongue twister of a strategy leads me to my last and most cliche point, and that's to hire the right agent. If you're not in my market here in Calgary, Alberta, I strongly recommend you get to know the professional you're working with. Not every agent in this industry puts as much attention to detail, understands these strategies, or even takes the time to truly care for the outcome at hand. Let me also say that it's not just real estate, it's every single industry. There are people out there who just want to make money and that's fine, but it's up to you as a competent buyer or seller to interview, get to know and challenge the person you're hiring. This is not a small transaction. Do your due diligence and ask tough questions. Qualify the professional that you'll be working with. That goes for every single industry and every single service out there. So. I truly hope you got some nuggets and insight on how to win in this crazy seller's market. Please reach out to me and ask any questions if needed. Even if you're in a different country or province, I'm honored to be in this position and I truly want to see you succeed. I can not advise on specific transactions or people who are already working with other real estate agents, 
but I don't want you to ever hesitate to shoot me a text or email as I'll try my best to point you in the right direction. Don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, peace.